हरे राम हरे हरे तो वी कंटिन्यू रीडिंग फ्रॉम भगवद गीता आई एम सॉरी श्रीमद भागवत वी आर ऑन कैंटो फाइव चैप्टर नाइनटीन a description of the island of Cham- chambudweep we heard <coughs> the different prayers offered by the residents of chambudweep we heard prayers by lord shiva lakshmi devi pralad maharaj uh how the de- vevasta manu and how and different personalities and how they are offering prayers to their worshipful deity <coughs> You know, like Lord Shiva is praying to Sankarsha, and and then Lakshmi Devi was praying to Kam Dev, and Vevasta Manu is praying to Matsya Avatar, Pralad Maharaj is praying to Lord Nishinga Dev. So the different incarnations, expansions of the Lord, and we can see how all over the universe, all such great personalities, they are offering prayers to God, you know, to Krishna. understanding his position as the supreme person as the cause of all causes so we are going to begin with chapter 19 a description of the island of chambudweep <laughs> sorry this chapter describes the glories of bharatvarsh and it also describes how lord ramchandra is being worshiped in the tract of land known as kimpurushvarsh The inhabitants of Kimpurusha Varsh are fortunate because they worship Lord Ramchandra with his faithful servant Hanuman. Lord Ramchandra exemplifies an incarnation of Godhead who descends for the mission of Paritrana ya Sadunam, Vinashaya cha Dushkritam, protecting the devotees and destroying the miscreants. Lord Ramachandra exhibits the actual purpose of an incarnation of the supreme personality of Godhead, and the devotees take the opportunity to offer loving, transcendental service to Him. One should surrender fully to the Lord, forgetting one's so-called material happiness, opulence, and education, which are not at all useful for pleasing the Lord. The Lord is pleased only by the process of surrender unto Him. So we may think. oh i can please the lord by becoming very great person by material standards by getting a lot of education or by getting a lot of wealth or creating i don't know like you know doing a lot of things but the lord is pleased only by loving devotional service when devrishi narad descended to instruct Sa- sarvani manu he described the opulence of bharatvarsh india sarvani manu and the inhabitants of bharatvarsh engage in devotional service to the supreme personality of godhead who is the origin of creation maintenance and annihilation and who is always worshiped by self realized souls in the planet known as bharatvarsh and there are many rivers and mountains as there are in other tracts of land yet bharatvarsh has special significance because in this tract of land there exists the vedic principle of varna sharma dharma which divides society into four varnas and four ashrams therefore narad muni's opinion is that even if there is some temporary disturbance in the execution of the varna sharma dharma principles they can be revived at any moment the effect of adhering to the institution of varna ashram is gradual elevation to the spiritual platform and liberation from material bondage by following the principles of varna sharma dharma one gets the opportunity to associate with devotees so varna sharma dharma it itself is not spiritual but it's like a stepping stone to spiritual life observing of our occupational duties when one does it one attracts the mercy of the devotees one gets an opportunity to associate with the devotees 
And such association gradually awakens one's dormant propensity to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead and frees one from all the basic principles of sinful life. One then gets the opportunity to offer unalloyed devotional service to the Supreme Lord Vasudev. So in the association of devotees, one's dormant, dormant propensity to serve. That's the sanatan dharma of every soul is to serve. So that gets awakened. And then one comes to the stage of pure devotional service, bhakti. Because of this opportunity, the inhabitants of Bharatvarsh are praised even in the heavenly planets. Even in the topmost planet of this universe, Brahmalok, the position of Bharatvarsh is discussed with great relish. All the conditioned soul living entities are evolving within the universe in different planets and different species of life. Thus, one may be elevated to Brahmalok, but then one must again descend to earth as confirmed in Srimad Bhagavad Gita, A Brahma Bhuvana Loka, Punar Avarti No Anjana. If those who live in Bharatvarsh rigidly follow the principles of Varnashram Dhan and develop their dormant Krishna consciousness, they need not return to this material world after them. So we are trying, we are here hearing the glories of this planet Earth that we are living in. That seems that even Lord Brahma and other inhabitants of Brahma Loka are describing the glories of Bharatvarsh. Because one gets an opportunity to engage in devotional service, follow Varna Sharma, engage in devotional service. Any place where one cannot hear about the Supreme Personality of Godhead from realized souls, even if it be Brahma Lok, is not very congenial to the living entity. If one who has taken birth in the land of Bharat Varsha as a human being, does not take advantage of the opportunity for spiritual elevation, his position is certainly the most miserable in the land known as Bharat Varsha, even if one is Sarva Kama Bhakta, a devotee seeking the fulfillment of some material desire. He is freed from all material desires by his association with devotees and ultimately he becomes a pure devotee and returns home back to Godhead without difficulty. So Prabhupada is mentioning here the special benefit of being born in the earth planet, being born in land called India, that one in the association of devotees can become liberated, become pure devotee. At the end of this chapter, Sri Sukadev Goswami describes to Maharaj Parikshit the eight sub-islands within the island of Jambudri. Sri Sukhavacha. Sri Sukhavacha. Kim Purushe Varshe Bhagavantam Adi Purusham Lakshman Akrajam. Kim Purushe Varshe Bhagavatam Adi Purusham Lakshmana Agrajam Sita Bhi Rama Ram Mam Takcharana Sani Karsha Bhi Rataha Param Sita Abhiramam Ramam Tacharanas Satri Karsha Abhirat Param Bhagavato Hanuman Saha Kim Purushe Avirad Bhakti Rupasate Bhagavato Hanuman Saha Kim Purushe Avirad Bhakti Upasate Philosophy Goswami said, My dear King, in Kim Purushvash, the great devotee Hanuman is always engaged with the inhabitants of that land in devotional service to Lord Ramachandra, the elder brother of Lakshman and dear husband of Sita Devi. So there's no purport here, Maishla Prabhupada. This is the translation. So there in Kimpurushwarsh, Anuman is always engaged in 
service of to Lord Lord Ram. Specifically mentioned as brother of Lakshman and husband of Sita Devi. Arish Tishe Nena Saha Gandhar Anugya Manam Param Kalyanin. Arshti Shenen Saha Gandhar Anugya Manam Param Kalyani. Parthir Bhagavat Katham Samu Pashranoti Swayam Chedam Gayati. Frit Bhagavata Katham Samu Prashnoyoti Swayam Cha Idam Gayati. The host of Gandharvas is always engaged in chanting the glories of Lord Ramachandra. That chanting is always extremely auspicious. Anumanji and Arish, Arishti Shen, the chief person in Kimpurushwarsh, constantly hear those glories with complete attention. Anuman chants the following mantras. In the Puranas, there are two different opinions concerning Lord Ramchandra. In the Lagu Bhagavatam Amrita 5.34-36, this is confirmed in the description of the incarnation of Manu. Vasudevadi Rupanam Avtara Parikirtita Vishnu Dharmotare Rama Lakshmanadhyā Kramadami Padme to Ramo Bhagavan Narayana Etirita Sheshas Chakram Chashankascha Kramatsyur Lakshmanadaya Madhya Desha Stitta Yodhya Puresya Vasti Smrita Mahavaikuntha Lokecha Raghavendrasya Kirtita. The Vishnu Dharmotara describes that Lord Ramachandra and his brothers, Lakshman, Bharat, and Shatrugan, are incarnations of Vasudev, Sankarshan, Pradyumna, and Anirudh, respectively. So, Lord Ramachandra, Lord Ram, he is incarnation of Vasudev. Lakshman is incarnation of Sankarshan, Bharat of Pradyumna, and Shatrugan of Anirud. The Padma this so this is in Lagu Bhagavatam. The Padma Puran, however, says that Lord Ram Ramachandra is an incarnation of Narayan, and that the other three brothers are incarnations of Shesh, Chakra, and Shankar. Therefore, Shlavidya Baladev Vidya Bhushan has concluded. In other words, these opinions are not contradictory. In some millenniums, Lord Ramachandra and his brothers appear as incarnations of Vasudev, Sankarshan, Pradyumna, and Anirudh. And in other millenniums, they appear as incarnations of Narayan, Shesh, Chakra, and Shankar. So Padma Puran is saying they are incarnations of Narayan, Shesh, Chakra, and Shankha. Narayan of that Lord Ramchandra is an incarnation of Narayan, Lakshman of Shesh, Pradyumna of Chakra, and Anirudh of Shankha. So, Srila Vidya, Vidya, Baladev Vidya Bhushan, great author, great scholar, great Vaishnava Acharya, he's explaining, yeah, he's and explaining that in some millenniums, they are coming from this personalities in other millenniums. They are coming as other personalities because they come millennium after millennium. They appear as incarnations of Narayan, Shesh, Chakra, and Shankar. The residence of Lord Ramchandra on this planet is Ayodhya. Ayodhya city is still existing in the district of Faisabad. Faisabad. Faisabad which is situated on the northern side of Uttar Pradesh. So in some millenniums, they are incarnations of Vasudev, Sankarshan, Anirudh, and Pradyumna and Anirudh, and in some of Narayan, Shesh, 
chakra and shankha. So I'll say this for word. Om Namo Bhagavate Uttama Shlokaya Nama Arya Lakshana Shila Ritaya Nama Up Shikshitatmana Upasita Lokaya Namaha Sadhu Vat Niksha Naya Namo Brahmana Brahmanya Devaya Mahapurushaya Maharajaya Nama Iti Om Namo Bhagavate Uttam Shlokaya Namo Arya Lakshanaha Shila Vrittaya Nama Upsikshit Atmane Upasita Lokaya Namaha Saduvad Nishkashaya Nama Brahmana Devaya Mahapurushaya Maharajaya Namaha Iti Let me please your Lordship by chanting the Vidya Mantra Omka. I wish to offer my respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead, who is the best among the most highly elevated personalities. Your Lordship is the reservoir of all the good qualities of Aryans, people who are advanced. Your character and behavior are always consistent, and you always control your senses and mind. Acting just like an ordinary human being, you exhibit exemplary character to teach others how to behave. There is a touchstone that can be used to examine the quality of gold, but you are like a touchstone that can verify all good qualities. You are worshipped by brahmanas, who are the foremost of all devotees. You, the Supreme Person, are the King of Kings, and therefore... I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. So Anumanji is praying to Lord Ram in Kimpurushwash. Yatta Vishudhanu Vishudhanu Bhava Matrami Kam Yatta Vishudha Anubhav Matrami Pratyakrashantam Sudiyo Palambanam Pratyakrashantam Sudiyo Upalambanam Yana Marupam Niraham Prapadye Hina Marupam Niraham Prapadye The Lord, whose pure form Sachidananda Vikraha is uncontaminated by the modes of material nature, can be perceived by pure consciousness. In the Vedanta, he is described as being one without a second. Because of his spiritual potency, he is untouched by the contamination of material nature. And because he is not subjected to material vision, he is known as transcendental. He has no material activities, nor has he a material form or name. Only in pure consciousness, Krishna consciousness, can one perceive the transcendental form of the Lord. Let us be firmly fixed at the lotus feet of Lord Ramchandra. And let us offer our respectful obeisances unto those transcendental lotus feet. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna appears in various expansions as stated in the Brahma Samhita 5.39. Ramadi Murti Shukala Niyame Nastishtan Nana Vataram Akarod Bhavane Shukintu Krishna Swayam Sambhavat Parama Pumanyo Govindam Adi Purusham Tam Aham Bajami. I worship the Supreme Personality of God at Govinda, who is always situated in various incarnations such as Ram, Nishima, and many sub incarnations as well. Who is the original personality of Godhead known as Krishna? 
but who is the original personality of God and known as Krishna and who incarnates personally also. So Lord Brahma is saying in Brahma Samhita that Krishna, Govinda, he is the supreme personality of Godhead. He is the original personality of Godhead. And from him, all the incarnations such as Ram, Nishingha, all are coming from him. Krishna, who is Vishnu Tattva, has expanded himself in many Vishnu forms, of which Lord Ramchandra is one. We know that the Vishnu Tattva is carried by the transcendental bird Garuda and is equipped with different types of weapons and four hands. Therefore, we may doubt whether Lord Ramachandra could be in the same category since he was carried by Hanuman, not by Garuda, and had neither four hands nor the Shankar Chakra, Gada and Padma. So Prabhupada is saying, someone may say that, oh, Lord Vishnu, Lord Narayan always on Garuda have four arms, always with these four symbols. But Lord Ramachandra, he has two arms. He's not carrying Shankar Chakra, Gada and Padma. He doesn't have Garuda there, only Hanuman. Consequently, this verse clarifies that Ramachandra is as good as Krishna, Ramadi Murti Shukala. Although Krishna is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead, Ramachandra is not different from him. Ramachandra is unaffected by the modes of material nature. And therefore, he is Prashanta, never disturbed by those modes. So, Lord Ramachandra, he is also Vishnu Tattva, he is an incarnation of Krishna. He is as good as Krishna, here Prabhupada is pointing out. So, the form of Lord Ramachandra, his body is Satchidananda, it's not material. By this prayer, we can understand. Yeah, the yeah, understanding in this prayer, the form of Lord Ramchandra is not a material form. It's not controlled by the modes of nature. It is such an ananda, transcendental. Okay. And he, his activities, his name, his form are all spiritual, not material. Unless one is saturated with love for the Supreme Personality of God, one cannot appreciate the transcendental value of Lord Ramchandra. One cannot see him with material eyes. Because demons like Ravan have no spiritual vision, they consider Lord Ramachandra an ordinary Kshatriya king. Ravan therefore attempted to kidnap Lord Ramachandra's eternal consort Sita Devi. Actually, however, Ravan could not carry off Sita Devi in her original form. As soon as she was touched by Ravan's hands, she gave him her material form. But she maintained her original form beyond his vision. Therefore, in this verse, the words Pratyak Prashantam indicate that Lord Ramchandra and his potency, the goddess Sita, keep themselves aloof from the influence of the material energy. So Ravan could not touch the original. Sita, who he took away was just Maya Sita, a material form, the Sita Devi created. The original form was there, not, not, with, not with Ravan. She was there with Agni. In the Upanishads, it is stated, Yam Evesha Vrinote Tena Labya, Katha Upanishad 1.2.23. The Supreme Lord Paramatma, the personality of Godhead, can be seen or perceived only by persons who are saturated with devotional service. So how to see the Lord with, with love? When we can anoint our eyes with love, then we will be able to see God everywhere. Actually, everywhere, everything is God's creation. But we don't want to accept it. We don't want to understand it. So we are not able to see that. But a pure devotee, he understands everything belongs to God. So he's seeing God everywhere. Just uh, like a mother, she sees her child's shoes, she immediately remembers her son. Santa Sadaya Vahridayeshu Vinokayanti. 
Yam Shama Sundara Machintya Gunaswarupam Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. I worship the Brahmable Lord Govinda, who is always seen by the devotee, whose eyes are anointed with the pulp of love. He is seen in his eternal form of Sham Sundar, situated within the heart of the devotee. Similarly, in the Chandogya Upanishad, it is stated, Eta astisro devata anena jivena. In this verse of the Chandogya Upanishad, the word anena is used to distinguish the Atma and Paramatma as two separate identities. The words tisro devta indicate that the body of the living entity is made of three material elements, fire, earth and water. Although the Paramatma enters the heart of the Jivatma, who is influenced and designated by a material body, the Paramatma has nothing to do with the Jivatma's body. Because the Paramatma has no material connections, he is described here as Anama Rupam Negaham. So the, the Paramatma, he is sitting in our heart. We have a material body right now. Uh, but we also have our own soul. We are the soul. So we are inside this heart of this material body that we are, we are in. This material body is made of fire, earth and water. But we are the soul. And sitting next to us is the super soul, is the Paramatma. So soul and super soul, both are spiritual. Both are transcendental. We are the soul. Krishna is in our heart as the super soul, the Paramatma. Because the Paramatma has no material connections, he is described here as a Nama Rupam Niraham. The Paramatma has no material identity, whereas the Jivatma does. The Jivatma may introduce himself as an Indian, American, German and so on, but the Paramatma has no such material designations and therefore he has no material name. The Jivatma is different from his name, but the Paramatma is not. His name and he himself are one and the same. This is the meaning of niraham, which means without material designations. So we, the jivatma, we identify ourselves with the body. We say I'm Indian or American or, or Chinese or whatever. That's us because we think we are the body, but the paramatma doesn't say that I'm Indian paramatma or I'm American paramatma. No. He doesn't identify with the material world. It's completely spiritual. This word, this word cannot possibly be twisted to mean that the Paramatma has no ahankar or no I-ness or identity. He has his transcendent, transcendental identity as the Supreme. So Niraham doesn't mean that he does not have his own identity. He has a Spiritual identity. This is the explanation given by Shila Jiva Goswami according to another interpretation. Given by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, Niraham means Nirshichan, nir, Nirnishchayena, Aham. Niraham does not mean that the Supreme Lord has no identity. Rather, the stress given by the word Aham proves strongly that he does have his personal identity because near not only means negative but also means strong ascertainment. So by these prayers we can understand that the Supreme Lord has a form, a transcendental form, a spiritual form, such as Ananda. So God has a form. Okay. Any questions, comments? Anything, anyone wanted to add anything? Okay. No. Mar no. Okay. Thank you. Martya Vatara Swaiha Martya Shikshanam 
मर्त्य अवतारा तु इहा मर्त्य शिक्षणम रक्षो वधैव नके वलम विभो रक्षो वधाये वनके वलम विभो कुठोन यथास्या रमत स्वात्मन गुतो अन्यथास्यात रमता स्वे आत्मना सीता कृतानि व्यसनानि ईश्वरस्य सीता कृतानि व्यसनानि ईश्वरस्य It was ordained that Ravan, chief of the Rakshasas, could not be killed by anyone but a man. And for this reason, Lord Ramchandra, the Supreme Personality of God, had appeared in the form of a human being. Lord Ramchandra's mission, however, was not only to kill Ravan, but also to teach mortal beings that material happiness centered around sex life or centered around one's wife is the cause of many miseries. He is the self-sufficient self Supreme Personality of Godhead, and nothing is lamentable for him. Therefore, why else could he be subjected to tribulations by the kidnapping of Mother Sita? When the Lord appears in this universe in the form of a human being, he has two purposes. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, Paritranaya Sadhunam, Vinashaya Chat, Dushkritam, to destroy the demons and protect the devotees. To protect the devotees, the Lord not only satisfies them <clears throat> by his personal presence, but also teaches them so that they will not fall down from devotional service. By his personal example, Lord Ramchandra taught the devotees that it is better not to enter married life which is certainly followed by many tri tribulations, as confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 9, Text 45. Yan methuna di grahame di sukham hitucham, kandu yanena karayor ivadukha dukham, trapyanti neha kripana bahu dukha bhaja, kandu tivan. Manjisha, manjis, man sijam vishaheta dhira. Kripanas, those who are not advanced in spiritual knowledge and who are therefore just the opposite of Brahmanas, generally take to family life, which is a concession for sex. Thus, they enjoy sex again and again, although that sex is followed by many tribulations. So the tribulations, children are born, have to take care of children for many, many years. This is a warning to devotees, to teach this lesson to devotees and to human society in general. Lord Sri Ramchandra, although the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself, underwent a series of tribulations because he accepted a wife, Mother Sita. Lord Ramchandra underwent these austerities, of course, only to instruct us. Actually, he never has any reason to lament for anything. So he's playing the part. Lord Ram was playing the part of a husband, of a, of a good husband. So he had to go and fight for Mother Sita. Being an example, but he's also showing by, by, by his example, oh, you get married, there are so many difficulties, not easy. Another aspect of the Lord's instructions is that one who accepts a wife must be a faithful husband and give her full protection. Human society is divided into two classes of men. Those who strictly follow the religious principles and those who are devotees. By his personal example, Lord Ramchandra wanted to instruct both of them how to fully adopt the discipline of the religious system and how to be a beloved and dutiful husband. So Prabhupada is saying that society is divided into two. One is the devotees and the others who are the who strictly follow the religious principles. So
So Ladram is showing how to follow properly the religious principles and yet be a loving husband. Otherwise, he had no reason to undergo apparent tribulations. One who strictly follows religious principles must not neglect to provide all facilities for the complete protection of his wife. There may be some suffering because of this, but one must nevertheless endure it. That is the duty of a faithful husband. So offering protection to the wife, that is the duty of the husband. By his personal example, Lord Ramchandra demonstrated this duty. Lord Ramchandra could have produced hundreds and thousands of sitas from his pleasure boat to a pleasure energy. But just to show the duty of a faithful husband, he not only rescued Sita from the hands of Ravan, but also killed Ravan and all the members of his family. So Prabhupada is saying, well, Lord Ram, he can just create so many Sitas, you know, millions of millions of goddesses of fortune are serving him. So he could have created so many. But no, he went to save her, to show how a dutiful husband should behave of a protection. Another aspect of the teachings of Lord Ramchandra is that although Lord Vishnu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his devotees may apparently suffer from material tribulations, they have nothing to do with such tribulations. So one may think, oh, Lord Ram, he had to go through so much, he had to endure so much, but he's God himself. He does not feel any much material uh, you know, he's not on the material platform, so he's not suffering at all. These are all his pastimes. They are mukta purushas, liberated persons, under all circumstances. Just like, you know, if a king comes inside the prison, now the prisoner is suffering in the prison. He's like, oh, I can't go out. I can't eat whatever I want. You know, whatever he may say, these sufferings are. So he may think the king also is suffering like that. But no, the king just came by himself. He's not bound by laws of prison. He can go whenever he wants. He can eat whatever he wants. So it is therefore stated in the Chaitanya Bhagavat, Yata Dekha Vaishnaveda Vyabhar Dukha Nishchaya Jani Taha Parmananda Sukha a Vaishnava is always firmly situated in transcendental bliss because of engagement in devotional service. So a Vaishnava is always experiencing bliss, bliss of spiritual bliss. Although he may appear to suffer material pains, his position is called transcendental bliss in separation, Viraha. So the Viraha bhav, that is, separation. The emotions a lover and beloved feel when separated from one another are actually very blissful, although apparently painful. So on our material way, we may think, oh, no, separation not good, so much suffering is there. How is it good? But in the spiritual platform, because the material world is a perverted reflection. So whatever is highest in the spiritual world becomes the lowest here in the material world. So on the spiritual platform, it's a source of great spiritual bliss. There's no suffering, but the love, the intensity of the love increases. So therefore, the separation of Lord Ramchandra from Sita Devi, as well as the consequent tribulation they suffered, is but another display of transcendental bliss. So this is the opinion of Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur. Because someone may say that, oh, they were separated, they were separated, but they're experiencing the highest ecstasy, just as the gopis. The gopis were loving Krishna so much more in the separation. You couldn't think of anything else except Krishna or anyone else except Krishna. Navesa Atma Atmavatam Suhritta Maha 
लवे स आत्मा आत्मवता सुरतम सत स्त्रीलोक्या भगवान वासुदेव सत्ता त्रिलोक्या भगवान वासुदेव न स्त्री कश्मल अश्नुवीत न स्त्री कश्मल अश्रुवीत न लक्ष्मण चापि विहा तुम अर्हते न लक्ष्मण चापि विहा तुम अर्हति since lord shri ramchandra is the supreme personality of god hai vasudev he is not attached to anything in this material world he is the most beloved super soul of all self realized souls and he is their very intimate friend he is full of all opulences therefore he could not possibly have suffered because of separation from his wife nor could he have given up his wife and lakshman his younger brother to give up either would have been absolutely impossible in defining the supreme personality of god had we say that he is full in all six opulences wealth fame beauty uh, strength influence beauty and renunciation is called renounced because he is not attached to anything in this material world he is specifically attached to the spiritual world and the living entities there so krishna is not attached to this material world he is aloof from it he does not personally live here in the material world he lives in the spiritual world that's why he is called renounced he is created it it belongs to him you know when we create something we something belongs to us maybe a house or maybe a car we like to look at it take care of it maintain it enjoy it Isn't it? But he's renounced it. Belongs to him. But he's like, I don't want to do anything here. I'm going to be in the spiritual world. The affairs of the material world take place under the superintendence of Durga Devi. Shristi Shristi Pralaya Sadhana Shakti Reka Chayeva Yasya Bhuvanani Vivarti Durga. Everything is going on under the strict rules and regulations of the material energy represented by Durga. but she serves krishna she is following krishna's orders she is not independent she does not create the material world therefore the lord is completely detached and need not give attention to the material world sita devi belongs to the spiritual world similarly lord lakshman ramchandra's younger brother is a manifestation of sankarsha and lord ramchandra himself is vasudev the supreme personality of god hmm. so lord ram he is an incarnation of vasudev the supreme lord himself since the lord is always spiritually qualified he is attached to servants who always render transcendental loving service unto him he is attached to the truth in life not to brahmanical qualities indeed he is never attached to any material qualities although he is the super soul of all living entities he is specifically manifest to those <clears throat> who are self realized and he is especially dear to the hearts of his transcendental devotees so the supreme lord he is attracted and attached to the devotees the devotees love him so automatically the lord he is attracted to them so he he also wants to be with the devotee because of this loving exchange because lord ramchandra descended to teach human society how dutiful a king should be he apparently gave up the company of mother sita and lakshman actually however he could not have given them up one should therefore learn about the activities of lord ramchandra from a self realized soul then one can understand the transcendental activities of the lord you know so we may we may try to speculate on the past times of the lord or oh, the lord did this or why he did this 
But the way to actually understand the pastimes of the Lord is by hearing from the devotees. Because the devotees understand the Lord. They understand his activities. So if we hear from them, we will be able to understand them. Then there won't be any confusion. Rajan Manunam Mahato Nasau Bhagam. Rajan Manunam Mahato Nasau Bhagam. Navan Nabhati Nakrit Nakirte Sto Shahetu. Navak Nabhati Nakriti Sto Shahetu. Teriyad. Vishrishtan apino vanau kash kasash. Te yatru vrishtan apinavak upasaha. Chakara sakhe bata lakshmana krajaha. Chakara sakhe bata lakshmana krajaha. One cannot establish a friendship with the Supreme Lord, Ramchandra, on the basis of material qualities such as one's birth is in an aristocratic family, one's personal beauty, one's eloquence, one's sharp intelligence, or one's superior race or nation. None of these qualifications is actually a prerequisite for friendship with Lord Sri Ramchandra. Otherwise, how is it possible? That although we uncivilized inhabitants of the forest have not taken noble births, although we have no physical beauty, and although we cannot speak like gentlemen, Lord Ramchandra has nevertheless accepted us as friends. In a prayer to Krishna expressing her feelings, Srimati Kunti Devi called him Akinchana Gochara. The prefix a uh, means not and kinchana, something of this material world. One may be very proud of his prestigious position, material wealth, beauty, education, and so on. But all these are certainly not good qualifications in material dealings. They are not necessary for achieving friendship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, you know, here, Hanuman is, Hanumanji, he's saying that to be friends with the Lord, one need not be very beautiful, one need not be born in a very good family, or be very learned, or scholarly, or intelligent, or in, born in a superior race. There's nothing material that attracts the Lord. No, the Lord is only attracted by devotion, not that he's that someone has to be very beautiful or should be able to speak eloquent poetry. No. The Lord is only attracted by devotion, by love. So Hanumanji is saying, we are example. Otherwise, how come the Lord is friends with us? <laughs> So here Prabhupada is saying that Kunti Devi in her prayers also says that one of her prayers that, you know, one may be very wealthy or rich, uh, beautiful or from a good family or have a lot of education, but these are not the qualities that attack, attracts Krishna. One who possesses all these material qualities is expected to become a devotee and when he actually does, the qualities are properly utilized. So whatever qualities, whatever opulence one may have, one should become a devotee of the Lord and then that is a proper use of that opulence, of that beauty, of the, of the education, of, of being born in a good family. Those who are puffed up by the high birth, wealth, education and personal beauty, Janmeshwarya Shrutashri, unfortunately, do not care for developing Krishna consciousness. Nor does the Supreme Personality of Godhead care about all these material qualifications. 
you know, because one may scratch his head, oh, how I can attract the Lord's attention? How can I become dear to the Lord? No, we don't need to. In the material world, yeah, we have to do so much material endeavor to, to get praise. You know, we have to do like wonderful things. So, so when somebody acts very wonderfully, then we'll get the praise or something. But for, with the Supreme Lord, with Krishna, because there's a loving relationship, which is, which is lost, we simply have to revive our love to him. The Supreme Lord is achieved by devotion. Bhaktiya maam abhijanati. One's devotion and sincere desire to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead are the only qualifications. So what are the qualifications? We don't need any qualification, just the bhakti is needed. Yeah. That's it. Only bhakti. So Rupa Goswami is love for God. Yes. Yes. Rupa Goswami has also said that the price for achieving God's favor is simply one sincere eagerness to have it. Lolyam ekam mulyam. So one may not have love for God, one may not have devotion, one may not have uh, the sincere desire to serve the Lord. But if one may just have the eager, sincere eagerness to have those things, one can attract the Lord. Lolyam. A sincere eagerness to have love, to have devotion, to serve the Lord. Have that intense desire in lolium, the greed, the great eagerness. Kola veka seva kera dekha bhagya sima brahma shiva kande yara dekhiya mahima dhane jane paan ditiye krishna nahi pai keval bhaktira vasha chetanya gosain. Behold the great fortune of the devotee Kola veka. Lord Brahma and Shiva shed tears upon seeing his greatness. One cannot attain Lord Krishna by any amount of wealth, followers, or learning. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is controlled only by pure devotion. So here Prabhupada is put, giving us the example of Kolaveka Sridhar. It was very, very poor. Kolaveka Sridhar was poor banana seller. And yet, Lord Chaitanya would come every day to talk to him, haggle the price because of the devotion that Kola Vika Sridhar had. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had a very sincere devotee whose name was Kola Vika Sridhar and whose only business was to sell pots made of the skin of banana trees. Whatever income he had, he used 50% for the worship of Mother Ganges and with the other 50%, he provided for his necessities. So he was very poor. How much can you make by selling banana cups, leaves, cups made of banana leaves? That also 50% he would give for the worship of Mother Ganga. On the whole, he was so very poor that he lived in a cottage that had broken roof with many holes in it. He could not afford brass utensils, and therefore he drank water from an iron pot. Nevertheless, he was a great devotee of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's a typical example of how a poor man with no material possessions can become a most exalted devotee of the Lord. The conclusion is that one cannot attain shelter at the lotus feet of Lord Krishna or Sri Chaitanya Gosai through material opulence. That shelter is attainable only by pure devotional service. So he didn't even have brass utensils. He was drinking from an iron pot. And Lord Chaitanya wanted to drink from that pot because of his love for Kolavik Sridhar. Anya bilashita shunyam jnana karmadi anavritam anukuliena krishna anu shilanam bhakti ratama. One should render transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord Krishna favorably and without desire for material profit or gain through fruitive activities or philosophical speculation. That is called pure devotional service. Only out of love. 
And then we can see that when the devotee loves Krishna, Krishna loves the devotee, then there is a very beautiful relationship, a very beautiful um, exchange happening as Prabhupada is mentioning here between Lord Chaitanya and Kola Vekshrida. Anyone wanted to add anything? Any comments, questions? So different perspective is here. Like for the first time in the very first one, they said that he didn't even, he didn't just come, Lord Ramchandra. He didn't just come to protect the devotees, but there was also the establishment, like how, uh, you know, the wife is the cause of all the miseries. The first time even I have come across such a perspective, but then there are so many others. We, we don't even know actual, you know, we just know, but then mm -hmm. there are so yeah. many things to learn with these prayers that Hanumanji is offering. There is so much depth. Yeah. In so it. True. Yeah. This is a totally different. Like I, I never I, even thought of that point in whole of life until now. Never ever. Mm. Mm. But that is yeah, a point, true. right? He came that yeah, how true. that is one of the points that but wow. Mm. Yeah, true, me too. Never thought of it. And Never yeah. ever. Yeah. <laughs> and like how the sincere sincerity and eagerness, I think we read in the first chapter in the evening classes, that was one of the major points Sukhdev Goswami mentioned. That eagerness and sincerity has to be there. Yeah. Even for, right? That was one of the major points, these two, eagerness and sincerity. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So thank you so much. Shla Prabhupada ki jai kaur bhakta vayana ki jai.